Namaste everyone. Uh, today in this particular video, I am going to talk, talk about a few secrets related to Dashamsha chart or the detailed chart in Vedic astrology. This is a free technique basically. I am going to do a webinar on Dashamsha on forthcoming 8th and 9th of this month. That is the coming Monday and Tuesday. On these two days, I am going to do a two-day around five hours webinar on D10, where we will cover different aspects of profession, Raja Yoga, along with Dasha and remedies for professional life. Technically, complete gamut of professional life I am going to cover. And as it happens with all of my courses, there will be a lot of new techniques that I have researched over my experience of around 12 years now in astrology that I am going to share in the course. And out of the many techniques that I have noted down to, you know, or planned to give in the webinar, today I am revealing a technique out. Right? It is just a freebie. And of course, because it is told on YouTube, it will not be covered in the course. It will be replaced by other techniques. So to understand this technique, <clears throat> there are a few basic understanding that one need to have. The first and the foremost point that you should understand, I have made a few videos on the Shamsha before. If you have watched them properly, you should know the things that I use in divisional charts, specifically in the Shamsha. The most important thing that I consider is debilitated planets give good money, whereas exalted planets give good power. And if you have watched that video, you must also know the importance that I give to Digabali planets, planets having directional strength. Basically, this Moon and Venus gets directional strength in the fourth house. Jupiter, Mercury gets directional strength in the ascendant. Sun and uh, Mars gets a directional strength in the tenth house. And Rahu, Ketu and Saturn these three planets gets directional strength in the seventh house is the basic formula. Now, as you have clearly understood, and as I have been emphasizing it multiple times, that this digable or the directional strength of the planet is plays a very major role in profession. Basically, <clears throat> why this is the case? To know this, you will have to understand the digbal or directional strength in depth. So digbal relates to disha or rather say direction. Now, this I relate to the word Narayan. Narayan means basically Narayan. Ayan means direction. It is commonly used to denote in which direction sun is traveling. So, ions of sun. So, Narayan, as per my astrological terminology, my personal astrological dictionary, Narayan means the ion or the direction that a nar or a human should choose. That is the particular reason in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna tells you, Yada Yadahi Dharmasya Glani Rabhakti Bharata Abhyutthana Madharmasya Tada Yuga Yuga the thing is, Krishna is saying, whenever the dharma will be lost, I will come again to reestablish it. Basically, the different incarnations of Sri Vishnu happen in every time, in every yuga, whenever there is a necessity to come and live a life and tell people how to live. This is the particular reason exalted personality like Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Ramakrishna Paramahans are also considered an incarnation of Sri Vishnu because they have taught the modern humanity the way to live and things related to spirituality. Basically living. Right? So this is what Narayan is. Now my thing is the digbal which indicates the directional strength or in which direction a planet is powerful. This directional strength basically talks about the direction that one should follow in life. The direction of dharma. 
you should understand a particular point. There is a shloka. The one who protects the dharma, dharma protects him. Dharmo rakshati rakshita. That means what? That if you are a businessman, your dharma, your righteousness falls by the side of business. When you remain right to the business, you don't cheat, you don't do malpractices, then business supports you. Helps you sustain a living forever. Dharma supports you. So basically, when you follow the directional strength planet, when you follow the Digbali plan, it supports you. Supports you by giving you livelihood, financial security, and many other things. This is the basic concept that I follow. And this concept, I have made five, six techniques over it. Many of which I will taught in the I will teach in the course webinar. And one I am going to discuss here. Right? And to understand this technique, you have to keep in mind the Kal Purush Kundali. Right? The natural zodiac. Right? So I have made a blank horoscope for you. Right? In this blank horoscope or make a mental blank horoscope, the first house will be Aries, second house will be Taurus, third house will be Gemini, fourth house will be Cancer, fifth house will be Leo, sixth house will be Virgo, seventh house will be Libra, onwards. Right? This is the basic trait. This is the basic thing. Now, the basic point that I am propagating right now, that I the basic technique tells us that, as I have already told you, <clears throat> but once again, see it diagrammatically. In the ascendant, the planet Mercury and the planet Jupiter gets a directional strip. In the 10th house, the planet Sun and the planet Mars gets the directional strip. In the 7th house, the planet Saturn, the planet Rahu and the planet Ketu gets the directional strength. And into the 4th house, the planet Moon and the planet Venus gets the directional strip. Now the basic point that I am making is... These houses are identical with Rashi's. This is the result. research. Basically speaking, if Moon and Venus are getting directional strength in the 4th house, they are losing the directional strength into the 10th house. 100% directional strength into the 4th house and 0% directional strength into the 10th house. Now, in this particular case, you have to keep in mind the progress of planet. When Venus will be in the fourth house, he will proceed from fourth house to fifth house, fifth house to sixth house, sixth house to seventh house, seventh house to eighth house, eighth house to ninth house, will go back to the tenth house. Tenth house onwards, he goes to the eleventh house, then to the twelfth house, then to the ascendant, then to the second house, then to the third house, then finally coming back to the fourth house. The basic point is 100% strength is there in the 4th house for Moon and Venus. 0% strength is into the 10th house, whereas there is 50% strength into the 7th house and 50% strength in the ascent. Starting from the 4th house, the auspiciousness of Moon and Venus keeps on decreasing to Leo and Virgo. By Libra, it sustains 50% only. Post Libra, it is furthermore decreasing to become zero into the 10th house of Capricorn. After crossing Capricorn, Aquarius and Pisces, the strength is increasing. In Aries, 50% strength is gained. In Taurus and Gemini, more than 50% of strength is there to finally reach 100% of strength in Capricorn. Cancer. Right? The order. What I call is ebb and tide of the planet. Now the basic point is these grahas are, or sorry, these houses are identical with the rashis falling therein. So the basic point is moon in moon or Venus in Cancer, 
right? As directional strength, I relate to profession, all right? So basically speaking, in D10, the Dashamsha chart, the horoscope that needs to be seen for professional life. Moon and Venus in the sign of Cancer are 100% powerful. In the sign of Leo, they are 80% powerful. In the sign of Virgo, they are 60% powerful. Libra, they are 50% powerful. Scorpio, they are 40% powerful. Sagittarius, they are 20% powerful. Capricorn, 0% powerful. Then once again, post-Capricorn, the strength is increasing. 20% beneficial in Aquarius, 40% beneficial in Pisces, 50% beneficial in Aries. After that, 80% beneficial in Taurus, 90% beneficial in Gemini, and 100% beneficial in Cancer. Right? This is for the professional life. Basically speaking, anyone having Venus in Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Gemini, or Taurus in the Dashamsha chart. In the Dasha Antar Dasha of Venus, good results related to professional life will be there. That is the basic principle. Whereas when Venus or Moon goes to Aries or Libra, 50% of good result related to professional life is there and remaining 50% of the good result is not there. Meaning that you have to check. It will either support Raja Yoga or professional status or Dhani Yoga that is income from profession. Depending on the other combinations, conjunctions, aspect that Moon and Venus are getting, you have to decide whether it is sustaining power or sustaining money and rejecting power or rejecting money. Post that, Moon or Venus in Scorpio, Sagittarius, Pisces and Aquarius are not so good. Whereas Moon or Venus in Capricorn is extremely bad for the professional. The results are manifested in Dasha Antarash. You have to choose the proper and appropriate Dasha as many of you should be aware that I don't always use Vimishuttari. Those who have taken a consultation from me know it well. Those who have learned into any of my courses also know this well that I don't always use Vimshottari Dasha. Applying the appropriate Dasha, the results are very astonishing. That is the particular reason I have decided to teach this research in the D10 course, which is almost 5-6 years old. So first I research a technique, test it for 3-4 years and only I have seen satisfactory result out of it. I out to teach it to my students being a responsible teacher. I don't follow the approach that I learn something today and start teaching it to my students tomorrow that I don't do. For an example, if you take the horoscope of Bill Gates, in 1979, Bill Gates was having the best financial period. He went from 10 million to 100 million. This happened in 1979. This was the Dasha of Sun. Why Sun is giving this particular result? Along with this, we will come to it later on. I still have to explain you about Sun. So we'll come to it later on. Let's talk about Venus, who is the 10th Lord of the Rashi chart of Steve Jobs. Now, if you look at the horoscope of Steve Jobs, 10th Lord of the Rashi chart, which is Venus, goes to Virgo in D10 chart. This Venus is debilitated. As per my own principle, debilitated planets in D10 chart give good amount of money. That means he is going to earn quite good amount of money into his professional life. And using the technique that I have just taught you, Venus in Virgo should be 70 to 80% powerful. Quite powerful, good result it have to give. As Venus is the 10th Lord for Steve Jobs, its placement into the sign Virgo is very good for the professional life of Steve Jobs. Right? That is without any doubt. Right? This should be clearly understood. Why we are considering Venus? Because it is the 10th Lord of the horoscope and it is the 10th house which we see for profession and success. Some people opine that for business, 7th house needs to be seen. That is not true. All type of profession, be it business, NGO, politics, or anything else should be seen from the 10th house only. 
एप्लीकेशन ऑफ दिंसिपल so to help them what i will do yeah to help them what i will do is i will tell it about other planets also moon venus we have understood right moon and venus are good in taurus gemini cancer leo and virgo mediocre Fifty percent good or fifty percent bad results in Aries and Libra, whereas bad results into Scorpio, Sagittarius, Aquarius, and Pisces, and almost no good result or very bad result into Capricorn. Coming to the second set of planets, Saturn, Rahu, and Ketu behave good in Libra best. other than this in virgo in leo in scorpio in sagittarius the result of saturn rahu and ketu are good in cancer and capricorn the result of saturn rahu and ketu is mixed it, it either gives professional status or fine good financial condition and in gemini taurus pisces aquarius the result of saturn rahu and ketu is not very good whereas in the sign of aries the result of saturn and rahu is worst for rahu and ketu it is quite applicable it is very good but for saturn one have to remember that because aquarius and capricorn are the own signs of saturn owing to this particular reason the result of saturn in aquarius and capricorn Though it should be either fifty percent good or forty percent good, it should it it would actually be more than that eighty percent good around, because the planets having sthanbal, the planets having positional strength, exalted, own rashi, in D ten chart also give good professional status, along with supporting raj yugas. So keeping that in mind for Saturn, an exception. have to be made for the sign of capricorn and aquarius and for other rashis the principle that i have taught you remains valid now coming to other planets for sun and mars capricorn they give the best result along with this in aquarius pisces sagittarius and scorpio sun and mars give good result in aries and libra the result is 50 50% either supports raja yoga or supports dhana yoga whereas in the sign of taurus gemini cancer leo and virgo the result of sun and mars is bad now keeping the particular fact in mind that mars becomes swarashi and sun becomes exalted in aries their result in aries is good and keeping in mind that sun will become swarashi goes to his own sign in leo the result of sun in leo is also good for other rashis what i have told you stands correct now the basic point is sun in capricorn should be in inimical sign so will it give bad result no as i have clearly told you exception should only be made for the exaltation sign and own sign for that particular matter despite the fact that sun will be in an inimical sign if it was if it goes to d10 if sorry if it goes to capricorn in d10 still the result will be good only right that is what the research is going further talking of the next set of planets mercury and jupiter mercury and jupiter gives best result in aries good result in gemini taurus pisces and aquarius mixed result only raj yoga or dhan yoga supported in i cancer and capricorn whereas bad result follows in leo virgo libra scorpio and sagittarius right bad results
Exception should be made for Virgo as it is own Rashi and exaltation Rashi of Mercury and for Sagittarius, which is own Rashi for Jupiter. Other than this, for other Rashi, the principles is works the way as I told you. One should also keep one thing more in mind that in Leo, in Libra, in Scorpio, Jupiter and Mercury will give bad results. This bad result is generally not, not, not much progress in professional life, a little bit of setbacks, a little bit of professional issues. Right? Generally, it turns into that. But added to this, if this Mercury or Jupiter is further afflicted by malefics, malefics such as Rahu, Sun, Mars, Saturn, further afflicted by them, either by their conjunction or their aspect, the result which is already bad can go even worse and it can lead to demotion, loss of job, suspension, etc. Right? Keeping this particular thing in mind, one should predict accordingly. Right? This is the method the prediction should be done. Now, the important point that I was talking in the horoscope of Steve Jobs. It was the Lord of the 10th house Venus going into Virgo in the D10 chart is what have given him such a great success. Along with this, financially speaking, 1979, the Dasha of Sun and the Antar Dasha of Jupiter is what gave him very good result. He went from 10 million to 100 million. This is according to my principle, my Dasha. Now, if you look at the horoscope, Jupiter, the Antar Dasha Lord, is situated in Aquarius in detail chart. What we have just learned that Jupiter gives good result in Aquarius, Pisces, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini as per my principle. This is the particular reason that Antardasha Lord Jupiter being situated in Aquarius Navamsha have given him the best financial period of his life. Not only this. In Nineteen ninety nine, there was a great Raja Yoga that came into being as TV shows and movies about Steve Jobs was being made. Once again, as per the Dasha Antar Dasha that is applicable, this was Jupiter Antar Dasha itself. Jupiter, we have already seen, gives good results. But the added point is, it was Mercury Mahadasha. If you look at the chart, Mercury is debilitated in the D10 chart. As I have already told in another video, the debilitated planets are good in D10. Good for the professional purpose, at least. And also from the new principle that I have taught you in this video, Mercury is supposed to give good result into Pisces. This is the basic point which led Steve Jobs become so famous at this particular point of time. Going further, in the year 2000, he gained permanent CEO position. Right? In the year 2000, when he had gained permanent financial position, it was Mercury Mahadasha itself. Right? Mercury it is debilitated, but that is very good. Right? Debilitation is good in the Shams that I have already told you. And through this principle also, this is the D10. Uh, sorry, Mercury in Pisces in D10 is supposed to be very, very good. 
Along with this, it was the under the Shah of Sun and using this principle, and when you look at the horoscope of Steve Jobs, you will find that Sun is also giving him good results. There is one thing that should be very importantly seen. Interim CEO of Apple, Steve Jobs becomes, becomes in 1996. This is when the Mercury Dasha starts according to my calculations. And this Dasha goes up to 2002. And up to this time, Mercury Dasha, because Mercury is debilitated, first of all, right? Debilitated planets are good in the Shamsha for professional purpose, as I have already told. And because it is Mercury that becomes debilitated in Pisces, and from this principle, Mercury in Pisces is good. From 1996 to 2002, it was a very great, finite, very great professional period for him, a time for Raja Yoga. And as soon as the Mahadasha of Mercury was over in 2002 August. One year later, around in 2004, he was diagnosed with pancreatic tumor and the rest is history. Right? So the basic point is this principle you have to use to find planets behave good in which Rashi in D10 chart and with the use of proper principles and appropriate dasha, you can predict professional life in depth, as in depth as you want to go. There is no limit in the application of this technique. You can go as in depth as you want. Once again, as I have always been saying, Rashis are very important in divisional chart. The concept of houses needs to be understood properly, but the Rashi is very, very important. Right? Hence, in every divisional chart, Rashi becomes important. And to understand about Rashis, it is very necessary. In ancient times, astrology was great. The predictions were brilliant, a level which today we only fantasize about was because of the reason, because astrologers understood Rashi's well, but today we don't understand, right? So about Rashi's, about the Shamsha I'm going to teach in this webinar that is going to be on 8th and 9th of August 2022. 